How are you doing? This is Martin from Gardens for Life. I just wanted to give you guys a quick summer update on our front garden. It's a no-dig uh, garden and um, it's also mulched with uh, wood chips. So um, the aim of the garden is to have it basically near zero maintenance and at the same time highly productive. We like to um, have uh, a very ornamental garden, of course, like anyone else, but also we like to interplant a few fruit trees and uh, some flowers, even um, even sometimes edible flowers too, and some vegetables too, so you'll see. And um, as we go through the garden, you'll find there are some more mature plants and some that are um, a little smaller yet. And most of them have actually been planted last year. And some of the even annuals have survived the winter. It was a relatively mild winter. However, um, I believe that the mulch helps to insulate the ground and uh, stops the soil from freezing and certainly um, it certainly uh, helps to keep the temperature up in the soil as well so enjoy the tour and um, we have a making of video um, from june 2018 i'll uh, put a link in the description below uh, one thing worth mentioning uh, with this particular garden we like to keep uh, a little bit of space for to plant annual vegetables and even some herbs as well but the majority of space is taken up by perennial uh, plants such as bushes and perennial herbs and um, even some fruit trees in order to um, cut down on the maintenance and not having to replant things every year plus you're grow enhancing the root system uh, every year as well and uh, it helps not having to disturb the soil uh, when planting new uh, annuals every springtime. And this lovely stone wall that was already here when we uh, moved in and here is the little gate that Bianca painted purple Just a lovely color and uh, this is basically what it looks like when we come to the front garden uh, from our house. Here's some space which we know. here's the cat door here's some um, space that I can use to plant some uh, annual vegetables or any kind of herbaceous perennials will do fine but I don't think there's enough sunlight here for flowers or fruit anyway so um, a little bit of space yet this is Portuguese kale it's perennial it's also known as walking stick kale the leaves do get quite substantially big this is only a small leaf now in comparison to what we have in the back garden here's some roses this is the willow arch or willow tunnel so this is the letterbox here and the postman has to walk through this willow tunnel every morning from the front gate that's what it looks like from the other side it really did turn out quite significant or magnificent I should say and it certainly has grown quite tall as well but I'm going to top it right here with the petrol hedge trimmer and uh, we have planted climbing roses on either side here's one lovely yellow one so I'm also going to plant a few grapes and a few um, hardy kiwis to climb the willow tunnel here are the uh, culinary herbs. This is rosemary, and there's some yarrow in between, and there's some uh, oregano. Oregano seems to do really well in this garden. And uh, mint, there's a black currant plant. Here's some yarrow. See the white flowers there? That's yarrow. We also have some clot of gold uh, yarrow and red uh, yarrow as well that were grown in the nursery. Here's a chive plant. It's not doing as well as it could do we have other chive plants that are doing really well there's a thyme plant quite a large one there's some ochre planted in between that's actually one from last year some rhubarb a few uh, strawberries love wood chips definitely worth planting them look at that they usually turn out very healthy i showed them in another spot where there's better lighting this is a small rhododendron plant and here's some uh, 
flowers. So it is a, a wood model, a lupin in the background here, just here. Huge lupin plant. Here is an apple tree. There's a wild rose, sage, St. John's wort, a white currant plant. Check out the level of production we're talking about. There's one branch and there must be about half a kilo of berries in that. And here is new wood that we could use to make new plants. We could use them as cuttings and uh, reduce the size of the leaves too, because otherwise they'll dry out immediately. These are white currants, lovely. It's going to be a nice crop. I don't think the blackbirds are going to get them because they don't know they're ripe unless they're gone red. Thank God, because the, the black birds have been uh, really going to town on our gooseberries and especially the strawberries and raspberries and there's been um, a serious number of blackbirds in the area this year and last year too but this year the numbers have definitely increased probably because of our garden so we have about probably be out two or three hundred maybe yeah, about 250 uh, berry bushes on our land they're only, a lot of them are only small yet. Oh, there's some strawberry plants. You can see how healthy they are. Very healthy strawberry plants. They've already been producing. Uh, we got like a kilo of strawberries out of this small little area here. And um, so, this is a wood mallow plant. You can see all of its lovely flowers. Quite a substantial plant when it gets going. Check out the size of the stem here. So that's about four centimeters in diameter, maybe five. So here's a bit of a path. We like to keep a bit of grass beside the house. Um, so we'll go over here. If you've seen the last tour in early spring, you'll remember um, this part of the garden, this is the hedge, so there's a lot of fruits again, there's some, uh, here's a bit of, um, this is a marshmallow with its lovely soft leaves, and a hawthorn tree, there's some sage, some willow, various different types of willow, hazel, Hopefully we get some nuts out of it, eventually. Here's a St. John's wort in between. Always nice to have a few flowers in between anyway. Here's more herbs. Here's a medicinal St. John's wort. Smaller leaves and smaller flowers. And here is a um, oregano plant going to flower. Focus, focus won't do it now, but there you are. Here is a huge red currant bush. If you've seen the video on um, getting free plants from cuttings, um, how to propagate plants from cuttings, uh, this is one of the bushes that was featured in it anyway. So I just basically took the took the wood off here. This is the green wood. It's now gone to semi-hard wood, I see. It's not green anymore, so it'll be harder to root. But I took the wood off another one, another one of these plants that's more in the shade in the back garden. Here's a, a comfrey plant, quite a large one at that. And here is an apple tree. This one doesn't do too well. This is a James Grief and it's not doing as well as the other varieties we have. Uh, here is um, a pineapple mint. And what a lovely aroma it has. It really does smell like pineapple when you rub it and I uh, haven't actually made tea from it, from pure pineapple mint. I must try that one day. Here's a sage plant that's kind of growing onto the path a little bit here. Here's um, more oka growing. Oh yeah, this is where the original oka plant was that we have featured in one of our videos. This is actually one of the tubers that was left in the ground. But to start oka um, there's no harm in leaving in the ground all winter, but in early spring they get eaten up 
by whatever is in the soil and everything else around. But during the winter time they're fine in a mulched garden. I'd recommend um, to grow them on through the winter. You just basically, in early spring or late winter, you uh, take up the tubers and plant them in a greenhouse in pots. And then you can kind of get extend the season a little bit too that way. There's a plum tree. For the first time it actually has one or two plums on it. And um, this is uh, garlic chives. So as you can see here, the hedge is getting quite substantial. This is a marshmallow again. We like planting a lot of marshmallow. It's such an easy thing to grow. And it's um, got lovely white and pink flowers for a long period of time. Here's a huge rhubarb plant. That rhubarb plant is only one year old. That's only been, that's only grown from seed uh, last spring. So it's a year and three months old at the most. And check out the size of it. Look, that's my hand there. Look at the size of that, the, the stalks. Amazing. We must actually harvest some of it, make a bit of um, bit of a stew or a pie. Here is a the giant potato that I harvested last year as well. There were potatoes. There was the one potato plant which just grew completely by coincidence down here. It just came in on um, in a pot with one of the raspberry plants which you see here. The potatoes that came out of here uh, were basically the size of my hand here now. Very large potatoes and uh, it's great. I call them coincidental um, potatoes or unintentional potatoes. And uh, a friend of ours said uh, that um, they're just as good as an intentional potato. <laughs> and these are some red ochre. And here's some uh, white wild roses. The loveliest smell of those. Smells like soap is what someone visiting our garden said. This is a new tree here. This is a mulberry. So we'll see how that goes. It's a grafted mulberry tree. This is a, our salmon berry. We're actually starting to propagate that one now and hopefully get a few plants out of it this year. There's a black currant and there is our big pink mallow. We're also going to have plants available for this one because we've been doing a lot of cuttings. It's actually taken over the path here so it's actually favorable for us to cut that back and we can use the off cuts then to grow new plants out of just by softwood cuttings. Here's a um, rose bush. We have a few cuttings done of these too. Look, this is still, even though it's mid-July in Ireland, you can still do softwood cuttings. This is new growth. So I could um, do a few more cuttings here. Might as well cut it back. I don't want it to take kind of grown up out onto the path too much. And um, again, nothing goes to waste. We can simply use all of the green wood as cuttings. Same as this Wygelia. This had some lovely, um, pink flowers and um, we're also doing those as cuttings. Now this year is really the year of cuttings. Finally we got the big greenhouse and um, we were able to get it all going. And here is the big uh, hydrangea. It must have been here for the last 40 years, maybe more. We have a picture of um, this house from 1990 and uh, you can see these huge monkey puzzle trees. They're now about 15 meters tall I'd say. And they were only half the size and this hydrangea was in the picture from 30 years ago. Imagine that. Here's some white currants. These were actually planted from um, reduced um, plants from woodies that we got. They were only half price. So I snapped them up and I'm uh, going to do a few cuttings from them too. Currants are really easy to take uh, softwood cuttings from. Even hardwood in the winter too. If you haven't um, done cuttings before, I'd certainly recommend watching our video. 
and starting off with currants because they're really easy to um, to to grow from cuttings. White currants, red currants, black currants, doesn't matter. They're all the same. Here's some more oregano. It just seems to grow really well here. Here is a strawberry plant. There's two or two or three of them, all kind of in one bunch. And this is what we were looking for: runners. So these will actually grow, and we can easily transplant them in the winter time. See this? This is a runner. Where is that coming from? Here, that's coming from this plant. Check it out. There, that's a runner. Now we won't be disconnecting that. There's the root growing, the new plant. Let's take that back in the ground now. And uh, we won't be disconnecting that runner until it's gone completely dry in the winter time. And uh, the reason is because the mother plant will be feeding the baby plant all the way through to the winter. Even if they have, even if the baby plant has established its root system, I wouldn't cut that off yet. Unless you absolutely have to transplant that one and uh, let's say it's, if it's on the pat or whatever. But you can always put it into um, a pot. You just take it up and stick that in on the pot like that and it'll grow the same way. So you don't have to let it grow where it, where it lands uh, automatically. And here is uh, another, uh, that's another plum tree. Here's a willow. Here's some uh, Lebanese uh, raspberry. Oh, sorry, Nepalese. And um, you haven't seen many berries this year yet. It could be too early yet. Here is the flowers. Well, last year we got a few berries out of it, but this year it's doing really well. If you're growing Nepalese raspberries, I would certainly recommend trellising them and um, not letting them tip layer everywhere because they just take over a patch of ground. Um, I'm going to do that and I'm going to contain them. At the moment, for the last uh, year, I've been happy to let them trail off because I'm going to take them up in the winter time and uh, I'm going to pot them up and transplant them to other spots on our land, especially uh, in the understory of our uh, forest here as well. Uh, we have another prunus, that's another plum. Prunus is plum, malus is apple, and pyrus is pear. This is a uh, they're all the Latin names. This is a crab apple. So we like to plant some uh, wild fruit varieties in order to um, achieve really good pollination rates and uh, disease control also, because uh, wild fruit trees have much better disease resistance than um, your named varieties, the ones that have been um, bred basically. And um, if you interplant them, they'll help um, not to let the uh, diseases spread too much. We like to plant one fruit tree, for example, this apple tree here, on its own. It's only a seems to be only a dwarf um, rootstock on this one because it's been three years now. We've moved it uh, from our last house. This was a present from our last landlord, very kindly uh, received it from him. And it's been growing apples ever since, every year. And it's they're the best apples we've ever had anyway. The variety is called Malus Fiesta. And um, definitely one variety worth going for. And um, for example, so you have um, one apple tree here, and then you have a uh, Wild apple here, a plum, a mountain ash, a willow, a plum, and another plum, and then you have a uh, apple. So you don't have too many apples in the one area, or not too many, not too many plums right beside one another as well. And um, it's really important, but also wild fruit has a longer flowering period as well, so you kind of get better cross pollination as well. So especially any varieties of fruit with the name golden in the name so you get uh, longer flowering periods so under fruit trees we like to plant um, rhubarb it's great for ground cover and it's very productive in the shade too 
and also of course uh, black currant and red currant and um, here is an edible geranium it's actually annual and um, it did survive the mild winter but mostly in this garden because there was a lot of soil activity under the mulch and it's also well insulated with it and here is um, cornflowers nice to look at also make for great uh, eye medicine exactly how I'm not entirely sure uh, here is a, a fig tree that's a brown turkey no figs on this one this year but uh, the one in the back there is a few we have about five varieties of figs now so um, they're planted in each of the gardens and here is a uh, fever few it's one plant that has kind of um, spread under its own weight and uh, it's the loveliest smell so you can smell it from about a meter away and uh, here's some uh, sea buckthorn that we're going to propagate this year hopefully if it grows at all here's some huge fennel plants and it's already seeding again every year these fennel plants are seeding I believe the variety is called uh, Florence, Sweet Florence and it's well worth growing even if you have a bad stomach you can easily um, make a tea from the leaves or just eat them and uh, even smell it, the smell is lovely it's um, very similar leaves to a dill plant which is used for pickling cucumbers and um, fennel is definitely an awesome um, perennial plant to have it's a medicinal and a culinary herb too and the seeds uh, can be used, can be dried on the plant and then just collect it for the winter you can keep them in a jar and the uh, flowers are very good for the insects as well they bring in all the beneficial insects into your garden here is a paulonia plant it's only small yet but it's growing it's only a bare root cutting and uh, here is another marshmallow this one is about two meters tall it's only one year old bear in mind all of this used to be just uh, grass that's all lawn I'll show you a picture in a minute here is um, um, that's uh, not Angelica, it is a valerian plant, this white one here, and uh, it's also a lovely smell as well, and it's a medicinal plant, you can make a tea from it and it'll help you sleep, um, even if you don't have any sleeping disorders, it also um, definitely can benefit you. And uh, here's another huge uh, butterfly bush, this one is about maybe three meters tall starting to flower. This is a big iced tea plant. This uh, has limonette in it. I think it's a citronella, that's the name of it. Um, smells like a lemon and you can uh, rub it on your neck and face and uh, midgets and um, the um, flies will stay away from you in the summertime if you're especially here at sundown in the garden. Here's a, a, a blackcurrant plant and here's a butterfly bush flower. It's it's absolutely enormous. Look at the size of that. It's a lovely smell off it too. It smells like uh, as good as any perfume. And uh, this used to be only a little uh, cutting that I stuck in the ground here about a year and a half ago in the winter. And look at the size of the plant now. It's huge. Oh yeah, uh, one thing I want to say about the iced tea plant, that's actually a cross between lemon balm and a type of mint. And um, we've uh, successfully propagated that one as well by uh, root cuttings, uh, even um, with part of the stem being there as well. Here's some um, red Russian kale, which was well insulated or isolated here in the front garden. I know there was no other brassicas flowering uh, this spring. So we're keeping that here, even though this is very valuable um, planting space. Um, it's full sun here as well. This um, kale crop of, um, of kale seeds are much more valuable than anything we can plant here. Because, um, well, it's red Russian kale. I'd say the seeds will stay viable for about two or three years at least. And um, it's 
good to get a, a purebred uh, brassica when it goes to seed because you get some amount of seeds. Like I'd say we're probably going to get half a kilo of seeds out of that, which is about, I think it's about somewhere between 50 and 100,000 seeds. Obviously you're never going to need that much, but it's great to have it and we can um, pass them on to people, anyone that is interested in them as well. We like to um, share seeds and plants and tubers and that type of thing too. And here's another wood mallow. Here's a, another mallow. That's a wild apple, so a crab apple. You can see here it's not grafted. So the stem is just straight down. There's no um, callusing. Here's a black currant. And here's another one of those white roses. You can see it's kind of spreading. So I'm going to take this and make cuttings out of it and grow new plants. And um, here you can see the, the big monkey puzzle trees again. So it must be about 15 meters tall at least. Here's a wormwood plant. It has grown, I'd say this, this plant must have, let's say about, grown by about tenfold in the last year and a half. Or even year and a month in it. So this is a black currant. Oh sorry, this is a red currant. She's grown very big. I can um, definitely go ahead and take some cuttings from that. What is this one? Look at that. It's not a fruit that I know. I didn't plant this here. This was here when we moved in. Not entirely sure. But uh, if anyone can tell me what plant this is, please let me know. This is the leaves here, look. That's the leaves. And here's some kind of weird fruits there. So um, let me know if you can tell me down in the comments, please. Be very interesting to know. All well, right, here is the front gate to the garden. Here's some pink roses and some more butterfly bush. Here's some raspberries and a white uh, wild rose. Some other flowering bushes, more raspberries and. Uh, Lovely fuchsia. Some serious amount of flowers on that because it's got full sun. And in the corner there we have some wild roses, some white currants, and some uh, gooseberries. Here's another fuchsia plant. A little bit of black Tuscany kale there as well. And here's another edible geranium and an actual lemon balm plant. That's not the iced tea, but it's the real lemon balm, the original. Here's a gooseberry. Here's a lovely St. John's wort, the ornamental kind. Here's a wormwood and a wood mallow. They're filling out the spaces we're not really using very nicely. And here's a tayberry. Ooh, the birds haven't found these yet. There's a good few of them on there. Here's a tayberry. It's a cross between blackberry and raspberry, I believe. Here is um, our baby Jacob's little playhouse. He likes to walk out here, open the door, walk in and walk out. Of course, we're teaching him to close the door after himself. Right behind this uh, big hydrangea. This is one of my favourite angles of the garden here. Because this all used to be just lawn. I'll show you a picture. Here's what this used to look like. This is the view from the road. So it's definitely filling in nicely. There's some trees here and a lot of uh, smaller shrubs and herbaceous perennials planted. Just to 
windproof the garden a little bit and make it a little bit more private and more useful and prettier too. So um, here's just a view of our wall in front. Here's that fuchsia again. And we have a lilac plant right here. That one there, lilac tree that has done flowers, done flowering about four weeks ago. So hopefully you enjoyed that little tour of the garden. And um, we've basically spent almost no time at maintaining, maintaining it uh, this year, even um, Maybe just mowing the lawn a couple of times a year and cutting the edges uh, towards the rocks on the, the borders of the wood chip uh, beds. Other than that, um, there's really no maintenance in it. And it's only about, maybe about three or four hours a year, would you believe it or not, that we have to spend actually working on this garden because it's all perennial and it's all mulched, so there's very little weeding to do. And um, check out the making of video. Um, it's in the description below. Thanks so many for watching. Bye bye.